a globally unique identifier is a unique reference number used as an identifier in computer software. The term GUID typically refers to various implementations of the universally unique identifier standard. GUIDs are usually stored as 128-bit values, and are commonly displayed as 32 hexadecimal digits with groups separated by hyphens, such as 21 EC 2020-3AA 4069A2D D 08002B30309 D. They may or may not be generated from random numbers. GUIDs generated from random numbers normally contain 6 fixed bits and 122 random bits. The total number of unique such GUIDs is 2122. This number is so large that the probability of the same number being generated randomly twice is negligible. However other GUID versions have different uniqueness properties and probabilities, ranging from guaranteed uniqueness to likely non-uniqueness. Assuming uniform probability for simplicity, the probability of one duplicate would be about 50% if every person on Earth as of 2014 owned 600 million GUIDs. Common users Microsoft Windows uses GUIDs internally to identify the classes and interfaces of COM objects. A script can activate a specific class or object without having to know the name or location of the dynamic link library that contains it. Because of this, ActiveX, a system for downloading and installing controls in a web browser, uses GUIDs to uniquely identify each control. Intel's GUID Partition Table, or GPT, a system for partitioning hard drives. JT files use a partitioning into 4 plus 2 plus 2 plus 8 times 1 bytes to represent nodes in the data structure and segment IDs. Second Life uses GUIDs for identification of all assets in its world. Database developers and administrators often use GUIDs as primary keys for database tables to ensure uniqueness between databases. Binary encoding a GUID can be stored as a 16-byte number. Microsoft defines a format which is split into four fields, defined as follows. Note that this format differs from the UUID standard only in the byte order of the first three fields. This NDRness applies only to the way in which a GUID is stored, and not to the way in which it is represented in text. GUIDs and RFC 4122 UUIDs should be identical when displayed textually. One to three of the most significant bits of the first byte in data 4 define the type variant of the GUID. For the standard variant, the most significant four bits of data 3 define the version number, and the algorithm used. Text encoding, a GUID is most commonly written in text as a sequence of hexadecimal digits separated into five groups, such as, 3F2504EO-4F89-41D3-9AOCO305E82C3301, this text notation contains the following fields, separated by hyphens, for the first three fields, the most significant digit is on the left. The last two fields are treated as eight separate bytes, each having their most significant digit on the left, and they follow each other from left to right. Note that the digit order of the fourth field may be unexpected, since it is treated differently from the other fields in the structure. Often braces are added to enclose the above format, such as, 3F2504EO-4F89-41D3-9AOCO305E82C3301, this is sometimes known as registry format. When printing fewer characters is desired, GUIDs are sometimes encoded into a base 64 or ASCII 85 string. A base 64 encoded GUID consists of 22 to 24 characters, for instance, PYUE4E plus ZOA DAMF 6 CWZAQ, PYUE4E plus ZOA DAMF 6 CWZAQ and ASCII 85 encoding gives 20 characters, for example, $5 HJ, PF backslash 4 or LB 9% KU backslash LJ, in uniform resource names, GUIDs have namespace identifier URID, for example, an URID 3F2504EO-4F89-41D3-9AOCO305E82. C3301, algorithm, in the OSF specified algorithm for generating new GUIDs, 
the user's network card MAC address is used as a base for the last group of GUID digits, which means, for example, that a document can be tracked back to the computer that created it. This privacy hole was used when locating the creator of the Melissa virus. Most of the other digits are based on the time while generating the GUID. The other parts of a V1 GUID make use of the time since the implementation of the Gregorian calendar in 1582. V1 GUIDs, containing a MAC address and time, can be identified by the digit 1 in the first position of the third group of digits, for example 2F1E4FCO-81FD11-9156-0003680F876A. Version 1 GUIDs generated between about 1995 and 2010 have data 3 starting with 11D, while more recent ones have 11E. Version 4 GUIDs simply use a pseudo random number for filling in all but six of the bits. They have a 4 in the 4 bit version position, and the first two bits of data 4 are 1 and 0, for example 38A52BE4 9352 453EAF97 5C3B448652 FO. More specifically, the data 3 bit pattern would be 0001XXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXX
but the increment happens in the data 1 field, not at the end of the GUID. The second technique, described by Jimmy Nielsen in August 2002 and referred to as a comb, replaces the last six bytes of data 4 in a random GUID with the least significant six bytes of the current system date time. While this can result in GUIDs that are generated out of order within the same fraction of a second, his tests showed this had little real-world impact on insertion. One side effect of this approach is that the date and time of insertion can be easily extracted from the value later, if desired. The comb technique tries to compensate for the reduced clustering in database indexes caused by switching to an OS version that uses random GUIDs rather than Mac-based GUIDs, and is useful only when it is not possible to revert to version 1 GUIDs. Starting with Microsoft SQL Server version 2005, Microsoft added a function to the Transact SQL language called New Sequentialid, which essentially provides access to the traditional version 1 GUIDs, with all their advantages and disadvantages. In 2006, a programmer found that the SYS GUID function provided by Oracle was returning sequential GUIDs on some platforms, but this appears to be a bug rather than a feature. Uses, in the Microsoft Component Object Model, GUIDs are used to uniquely distinguish different software component interfaces. This means that two versions of a component can have exactly the same name but still be distinguishable by their GUIDs. For example, in the creation of components for Microsoft Windows using COM, all components must implement the Erwin known interface to allow client code to find all other interfaces and features of that component, and they do this by creating a GUID which may be called upon to provide an entry point. The Erwin known interface is defined as a GUID with the value of 000000000000000C00000046 and rather than having a named entry point called Erwin known, the preceding GUID is used, thus every component that provides an Erwin known entry point gives the same GUID, and every program that looks for an Erwin known interface in a component always uses that GUID to find the entry point, knowing that an application using that particular GUID must always consistently implement Erwin known in the same manner and the same way. GUIDs are also inserted into documents from Microsoft Office programs. Even audio or video streams in the advanced systems format are identified by their GUIDs. A GUID's representation can be little endian or big endian, so all APIs need to ensure that the correct data structure is used. Subtypes There are several flavors of GUIDs used in COM, IID a Euro Interface Identifier. CLSID a Euro class identifier. LIBID a Euro type library identifier. CATID a Euro category identifier. DCOM introduces many additional GUID subtypes. APP a de Euro application identifier. MID a Euro machine identifier. IPID a Euro interface pointer identifier. CID a Euro causality identifier. OID a Euro object identifier. OXID a Euro object exporter identifier. SETID a Euro ping set identifier. These GUID subspaces may overlap, as the context of GUID usage defines its subtype. For example, there might be a class using the same GUID for its CLSID as another class is using for its IID a Euro all without a problem. On the other hand, Two classes using the same CLSID could not coexist. XML syndication formats. There is also a GUID element in some versions of the RSS specification, and a mandatory ID element in Atom, which should contain a unique identifier for each individual article or web blog post. In RSS, the contents of the GUID can be any text, and in practice is typically a copy of the article URL. Atom's IDs need to be valid URIs. See also, Security Identifier, Object Identifier, Device Fingerprint, References Sources External links, Technical Note Tennessee, 2166 Secrets of the GPT, Mac Developer Library, UEFI and Windows, Microsoft TechNet, 
CLSID Registry Key Information, Microsoft Developer Network, International Standard Generation and Registration of Universally Unique Identifiers and their use as ASN1 Object Identifier Components, DMA it for instance it values, syntax and semantics of the DCE variant of Universal Unique Identifiers, generate and parse UUIDs in Java, UUID Generator, International Telecommunications Union, GUID generator and source code samples to make GUIDs UUIDs.